automobiles, driverless cars sure are the next big thing. With heavy financing from companies like Google, Amazon, General Motors, Uber and many more, startups like Tesla, Rivian, Faraday Future are rising to prominence. 55 companies have permits to test autonomous vehicles in California alone. And all the manufacturers are targeting towards making driverless cars global by 2022. But they still haven't gotten a green light from the government to hit the roads on a full scale. That's because making a law when humans and machines are operating in conjunction is a complex process. There are many factors yet to be determined, such as what would happen if a driverless car gets into an accident? Who will go to jail? Who will be blamed? Well, that's exactly what we're going to see in today's video. 18th of March 2018 changed the way we look at autonomous vehicles. That day in Tempe City in the state of Arizona, an Uber-owned self-driving car struck and killed a pedestrian named Elaine Herzberg. And the vehicle was in fully autonomous mode at the time of collision. This incident marked the first officially recorded death by a fully autonomous vehicle. Now, to this date, there have been six fatalities in accidents involving both fully autonomous and automated cars, where autonomous is completely driverless, and automated is the one like Tesla has, where driver needs to be aware all the time. And according to one another report, since 2014, there have been 90 incidents involving autonomous vehicles in California. So to be fair, these numbers are not insignificant to be completely ignored. If I'm being honest, our legal system has yet to be truly tested in the realm of driverless vehicles. The reason being, every incident involving autonomous vehicles in US has been settled outside the court. Uber reached a settlement agreement with victim's family within 10 days of incident. So far, just one proper lawsuit has been filed, which involved a collision of self-driving car and a motorcyclist in San Francisco. But even that case reached a settlement. So in reality, we are yet to face a situation where somebody had to go to jail for the accident. But as the number of autonomous cars increase rapidly, sooner or later, we'll be facing a situation where the court has to reach a conclusion and put the blame on one of the parties. The world of autonomous vehicles is still nascent and we are yet to adapt to complex real-world scenarios that will be thrown into the picture when these cars hit the road. Current laws are being developed such that, for partially and fully autonomous vehicles, the blame can be assigned to one of the many parties, including the manufacturer, the service center, and the vehicle owner. Manufacturers could be liable in case of design or manufacturing fault. For example, let's say the incident happened due to buggy software or a physical hardware failure in the vehicle despite of all the guidelines being followed by the owner. Or the service center could be blamed for inadequate service to the vehicle. On the other hand, liability might fall to the owner for failing to implement a latest software update from the manufacturer or for not maintaining vehicle properly. And determining what exactly led to the incident will require data gathered by numerous sensors that are already available on almost all of these vehicles. These sensors would keep on monitoring the health and conditioning of the vehicle. And the same sensors could tell us who exactly was operating at the time of collision, software or human. For the court of law to reach a conclusion during a lawsuit, they need to be sure that data gathered by these sensors is authentic. Although there are many advanced sensors available on this vehicle, if we are to trust the data collected by them, they need to be in a perfectly working condition all the time. And data collected by these sensors must be secured such that neither manufacturer nor the vehicle owner can hamper it at any point of time. Which means you cannot let the consumers access the data acquisition software, which in today's day and age is really difficult, as consumers are already suing big corporations for not giving them full access to the software side of devices. And sharing the data gathered by vehicle means you will have to share your personal information with a third party on a real-time basis, which might be a problem in privacy-focused markets like Europe. Manufacturers would have to convince the consumers that their data will remain private, you know, until the government asks for it. And other problems would come up when these cars face real-life conditions where it's impossible to make a decision in given time. For example, let's say an autonomous car is driving at 60 miles per hour on a highway and somebody just jumps in front of the car out of nowhere. Now, however fast the response time of driverless car may be, it will need some time to halt. And if the given time is not enough for that and crash still occurs, you cannot just blame manufacturers for that. For conditions like these, we will need in-depth information like actual footage of the crash, which might be hard to get given that crash can destroy the very system which gathers information in the first place. 
and cameras cannot record their own destruction. So in a nutshell, all the cases where there was a death due to autonomous vehicle have been settled outside the court. And we are long distant from building a reliable and robust infrastructure which will help us reach a definite conclusion about who is to be blamed for a particular incident. And the conclusions will vary from case to case. And it will be a nightmare for lawmakers and insurance companies to come up with a single policy which will encompass all these scenarios. Well, that concludes this video and as always, thanks for watching.